Hello, welcome to GMT. I'm Lucy Hawkins. More than 9,000 people dead, 50,000 injured, millions needing aid. Yemen has been devastated by a civil war that the UN describes as the world's worst man-made humanitarian disaster. You'll have seen our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette. She's been traveling around the country and reporting extensively on the conflict. Earlier in the program, we saw her report from the south of the country where Yemeni government forces have pushed out the Houthis. Well, the politics behind this conflict are incredibly complex and whether or not uh, there is an end in sight is a question we're about to tackle. With me here in the studio is Dr Elizabeth Kendall who is a Yemeni ex Yemen expert at Oxford University's Pembroke College. And also from Geneva I'm pleased to say that Robert Mardini from the Red Cross is with us as well to talk about what is happening there in terms of the humanitarian crisis. But Elizabeth can I start with you? Is there an end in sight? Is there a possible chance of peace? Well, peace certainly isn't going to be easy. You've already mentioned the battle against the Houthi rebels. That's the main war that the coalition is fighting. But there are also other sub-wars going on in Yemen. There's a conflict with the separatists in the south, in the, cap in the temporary capital of Aden. And there's also a terrorist problem. So it's not going to be easy. Nevertheless, I do think we now have an opportunity. We have uh, international fatigue at the terrible humanitarian cost of this war. We have a new UN special envoy who's just been appointed for Yemen, and that should hopefully bring some new thinking. And we also had a Saudi reshuffle in its military earlier in the week, and I think that that should signal a fresh approach. What about Iran? Is Iran a game changer? Well, Iran is actually increasing its influence as the war goes on. So counterproductively, the war has actually led to an increasing Iranian influence in the Arabian Peninsula, in particular in Yemen. And so I think that that will also sharpen the focus of uh, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and their allies to really search harder for a political solution. Yeah, so that's a big picture political situation. Meanwhile, misery for people living there and this huge humanitarian crisis. Robert, if I could ask you, uh, are you still having problems getting aid into the country or has that been easier of late? There has been some improvement, uh, but let's uh, face it, the humanitarian situation now uh, uh, after three years of uh, this uh, conflict is nothing short of catastrophic and uh, all the measures uh, that were taken remain very short of what the Yemenis need. Uh, the country is being drip fed and it uh, does need a loading dose of everything ranging from medical supplies to fuel to commercial imports. It's not just about humanitarian aid, it's about uh, revenue revamping and uh, reactivating the commercial uh, supplies into the country that uh, depends uh, largely on uh, imports. 90% of what uh, Yemenis need uh, comes from abroad. And uh, if I give you just the uh, figure of medical supplies, today the country is getting 30% of the medical supplies it needs. So uh, yes, not enough, clearly. What, Robert, what's happening with cholera? Cholera is an indicator that uh, people in Yemen today, not uh, they, they don't die because only of uh, airstrikes and ground fighting and uh, uh, because of wounds, but they die also because of uh, chronic diseases uh, that cannot be treated. Uh, at ICRC, we are importing now insulin vials, we are importing uh, dialysis uh, supplies and equipment because people are dying because of these uh, the lack of these uh, critical uh, chronic disease medicines uh, so, so so much more needs to be done uh, today for Yemen is uh, uh, you add to this the catastrophic uh, uh, economic situation uh, where people are not able uh, and cannot afford buying uh, food supplies in the market uh, they cannot uh, um, uh, afford buying fuel uh, the ICRC has also supplied uh, in an unprecedented uh, step fuel to many cities to keep the water flowing in the pipes, uh, which uh, also is an indicator of how dire the situation is today in Yemen. Elizabeth, we talk about the prospects for peace, even if we do eventually see things coming down. What Robert's describing, there's going to be a knock-on effect for not just years to come, generations to come. 
Yes, that's right. And one of our biggest concerns is the impediments for children going to school, the impediments to education. Who is going to rebuild this country? But in a sense, the humanitarian crisis, although it's enormously important, is a distraction from solving the underlying roots of this conflict. It's much easier for governments to talk about giving aid than it is for them to talk about how do we address the real crux of the issues in Yemen, which are regional grievances, uh, the kinds of local grievances that, re that lead to the breeding of Islamic extremist groups and the sharing of power, resources and territory within I mean, Yemen. We've just seen one of the first attacks by Islamic State in the country. What is driving people, young men, to join jihadist groups like IS? The problem is that the military solution to fighting terrorism is not going to work alone. We saw Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula pushed out of its stronghold in the East in 2016. And last year, the US undertook over 130 drone and airstrikes against terrorist groups. Nevertheless, Al-Qaeda alone was able to perpetrate uh, about 270 operations inside Yemen. And as, as we saw, this uh, Islamic State attack devastating at the weekend, the problem's not going away only by military means. Robert, does it feel at all that the international community is putting nearly enough efforts into finding a solution? Well, absolutely. The, the international community needs really to get its act together and to find a political solution to this conflict. I fully agree. Humanitarian aid is today critically important because it saves life, but this is not going to solve the conflict. Yeah, there is urgency there for all to see. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. Robert Mardini there uh, from Geneva. Elizabeth, good to have you with us there. Elizabeth Kendall here in the studio with me.